day, everyone. Uh, last but not the least, uh, I'm going to talk more about the Croatian demographic uh, situation. So, this uh, final panel of our summer university is in, is in one sense the most important because, unlike all the others, it is about nothing less than national survival. The state of our economy, the way we organize our relations with other countries and the national organizations, how we view our history, all these have an impact on our, na on our national existence. But first and foremost, we must keep on existing. <laughs> Unfortunately, we were not able to persuade uh, any of our Croatian demographers to come and explain the facts, so I'm afraid that I shall have to stand in for them. My qualification to speak uh, on this issue is somewhat different uh, from theirs. My family comes from a Croatian village in uh, Herceg Bosnia, Canton of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I was educated in Zagreb and I got married here uh, nine years ago. Uh, my wife and I started up our own business, which I now run, and she has her own business. I'm uh, politically active in Croatian Democratic Union, and I'm also secretary of, of the Center for Neural Culture, who gathered you all here. Uh, and the most important and relevant, as Alejandro said, uh, seven or eight times <laughs> that I have six uh, children, four sons and do uh, two daughters, and if God is merciful, uh, we shall have more. That's high productivity. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some others of my generation uh, left, uh, especially from my home village in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, I understand why. Uh, life in, in business is a hard slog. Uh, having a higher living standard, which I would enjoy in Germany, would be nice. But, uh, but I plan to stay. I want to be part of the solution of uh, Croatian's uh, existential problem, not add to it. My experience and insights uh, have, I hope, relevance uh, to our discussion here. There is, as we have heard, a European demographic crisis, which Alejandro beautifully portrayed and outlined. The overall figures, which may be wrong, do not sound too alarming, and they come from Eurostat. They suggest a fall in the European Union's population of 6% till year 2100. That is the most optimistic, I think, figure, but the less optimistic uh, would go very much down. Uh, if all of you are concerned about uh, is whether there are enough workers to, uh, to do the menial jobs that uh, Germans, French and Italians do not want to do themselves, that, that may be tolerable. Immigrant workers uh, and your own rapidly increasing immigrant worker communities will, will provide for that labor. But that, that is not all we should be concerned about. A society based on very low imported labor is not sustainable. Bringing in thousands of single young men to work at uh, low wages uh, is going to lead to trouble. Croatia is a very safe and secure place to be. If it becomes like the West, it will be transformed into something else. We saw in, in, uh, in France recent weeks what is happening. If, on the other hand, uh, you bring in immigrants with families, you have a different problem, including, for example, a housing problem. Uh, above all, you will have a problem of common identity or uh, lack of it. Uh, the so-called American melting pot w worked for many years for them, but only based on assimilation, which in Europe has never happened and never will happen. Now minorities of, of any kind do, do not wish to assimilate. They wish to separate, and then in many cases they wish to dominate. We can see that elsewhere too. Uh, Croats are very welcoming people. We have fled uh, from and returned to our homes. We know the mental anguish of having no home, but we are also a small nation. We are, as the ancient uh, phrase uh, had it, the remains of the remains. Yeah. From the late 15th to the 18th centuries, the Croat nation was ravaged by war and destruction, destruction from which it has never demographically recovered. 
than there were two world wars. Oppressive regimes prompted mass emigration for political reasons. Economic emigration was encouraged by the communists to provide uh, income from remittances for, the fail, for their failed system. The homeland war in, in, uh, displaced population in the 90s. And then there was the natural response to rejoining Europe, emigration to richer countries. All these have had a huge demographic impact. Uh, the distinction between short and long emigration uh, can be very uh, misleading. For whatever reason, a man or a couple go abroad intending to return, but then they find entanglements they cannot break. Their children go to the Western schools, their traditional faith, Catholic faith is often lost. By the next generation, it is often an effort to help children to speak Croatian language. Uh, why return then? What is temporary has become permanent, and one more piece of homeland's uh, human stock is lost. We in Central, Eastern and Southern East Euro Europe are worried about demography more than Westerners uh, can understand. Many criticisms are made of uh, Prime Minister uh, Viktor Orban of Hungary, but it would be uh, hard to find anyone who talks as much uh, good sense and then acts on it as he does on the question of, of demography. Uh, so let me quote a part of Orban's speech uh, delivered on the third, uh, at the third uh, Budapest Demographic Summit in 2018. Anna probably knows about it. He said, we must reject the argument that on a global scale migration can solve the problem of population decline in Europe. If we accept this, then there is nothing more to be done. If, however, we refuse to accept it, then there is. If in the future Europe is to be populated by people other than Europeans, and if we accept this as a fact and see it as a natural, then we will effectively be consenting to the population replacement. There are some in Europe who see this as the basis for policy. There are political forces which, for a variety of reasons, want to see population replacement. These reasons range from the utilitarian and political to the ideological, ideo ideological. We must firmly point out if we want to create demographic policy, we ought to steer clear of the migration-based approach. He continued, Hungarians believe that every child has the right to a, a mother and a father. This means that when we talk about family and family support, we are supporting traditional families and we are protecting the traditional family model. We are also thinking in terms of the nation because we believe that families and children are in themselves the precondition for the biological regeneration of our national community. If families are not functioning, if there are no children, then a national community can simply disappear. This is per perhaps not so obvious uh, to the large family of the Anglosphere. A uh, German would uh, not understand how a nation can disappear from the face of the earth either. But for a national community of the size of Czechs, uh, Serbs, Hungarians, sooner or later there will be just one survival left to turn off the lights. We would face potential ex extinction. This vision is not some feverish nightmare we think that if the world loses a nation, then it loses something that cannot be replaced by anything else. End of quote. Well, everything that Orban says of the Hungarians and the other smaller East and Central European nations is true of Croats as well. Our situation is no better. Arguably, it is worse. There are almost 10 million Hungarians, but they are, as we know, for the first time in recorded history, fewer than 4 million uh, Croats in Croatia. The 2021 census showed that, that the population stood at 3.9 uh, million, of whom 92% were Croats. The population has, had fallen since 2011 by almost 10% when it stood at 4.3 million. Uh, that decline was uneven. In some uh, areas, uh, notably Slavonia, which, which is eastern, Croatia, it was uh, very, dra uh, very dramatic. Some counties, 
lost uh, up to 20% of their population just in 10 years. Uh, in the past, uh, the shortage of, uh, of workers were, was largely met from Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, where many, where basically maybe half million of Croats live. Uh, now it is being met from Asia and Far East, uh, mainly because so many from Bosnia and Herzegovina prefer higher paid work in Germany or elsewhere in Europe, Austria, Switzerland. If all you care about is whether there is someone to load bricks or wash dishes as cheaply as possible, you may be happy with this. A recent report in the newspaper uh, Utah released uh, put a positive spin on it. For the first time since 2008, it said, last year saw a positive migration surplus. 46,000 left and 58,000 came, most being foreign migrant wo workers. But nothing can detract from the more important fact that about 34,000 children were born while 57,000 adults died. So a very negative deficit of 23,000 people. Uh, even viewed in economic terms, uh, reliance on foreign, particularly low-skilled non-European workers to provide cheap labor is a bad model. Of course, if the population of country expands, then its output probably will too, and GNP figures may look encouraging. But it is productivity, output per head, which determines life's living standards. The impulse to improve productivity is removed if cheap, inefficient labor is available to fill any gap. Croatia must improve its productivity if it wants to improve its position in the European League table and if it wants to offer incomes that deter people from leaving and, and attract Croats back, back from abroad that have left. Commenting on recent figures, the demographer Professor Stepan Sterz observed that they were worse than expected. In an interview with uh, the Narod portal, he said that the population projections should now be downsized even below the UN prediction that in 2050 the population of Croatia would fall to 3.3 million. He said that it was a catastrophe and that Croatia was disappearing. So. What is to be done about it? The first point to make is that, despite the frustration, some measures are in place to help those who decide to get married and have children. I have benefited, benefited from some of them, so I know. This, uh, the Croatian state gives tax breaks for each child. It also gives child allowances to those below certain income. Mothers get paid maternity leave for the first six months on their full wage, whatever it is. For the next six months, they get a maximum of 1,000 euros per month. Fathers also now, to, to the new, get paid li leave for two months. For the, chil for the third child, mothers can get a paid three-year maternity leave with the last two years at the maximum rate of 540 euros per month. The state also subsidizes housing loans for young families. The state pays for school books, transport to school and school meals. The city, uh, uh, so the local government is also involved uh, in, in the city sub subsidizing. So city subsidizes kindergarten fees and they uh, used to give 7,000 euros for the child, for the third child and further children, which the red radicals uh, now in charge of Zagreb have now abolished. So we now have a mayor that comes from a, some kind of a franchisee of Podemos. They are called the same in Zagreb. Mm -hmm. So so some kind of a watermelon uh, party ideology outside uh, green, inside red. Uh, uh, plus, uh, with the abolishing of this 7,000 euro for third child, they abolished the 600 euro per month allowance for mothers who looked after their third or more children at home. Ha. Could more be done to help? Yes, more can always be done if the national economy can afford it and if you give it uh, sufficient priority. Hungar Hungary offers uh, a good model comprehensively covering many needs and offering many incentives, as we have heard. 
there is now uh, in Croatia a broad national political consensus that the demographic issue is central. At least everybody says it. Uh, the Croatian Prime Minister recently even promised that demographic revitalization would be one of the top three priorities for Croatia during the, this decade. I believe that if it is to succeed, that undertaking must involve two large changes. The first change is that the wages of Croats working in Croatia, especially, but not only in the service industries, will need to rise substantially. Without that, we shall not retain, let alone attract back Croats from abroad. Croats are not prepared to work here on what they are currently offered, and if they can move without too much difficulty, they will go abroad to get more money. Raising the price of labor, which is compatible with, the, with economic advance, because it will force up productivity as it does in competitive conditions, can be achieved in two ways. You can stop or cut the import of cheap uh, foreign labor, or you can sharply inc increase the minimum wage, or you can do both. Neither would be popular with business, and perhaps tax, re tax reliefs might sugar the pill. The second change, which is still more important, is not in the hands of government, or at least uh, only partly. The church has a bigger role which it should now embrace more vigorously. We Croats who are active in politics, public life or the media also have a per, uh, responsibility. We must change the climate uh, of public opinion by promoting a culture of life and family. For decades now, the global elite and some national commentators too have portrayed uh, human beings as the greatest threat uh, or greatest problem of the, pro of the planet. The obsession with overpopulation and its current manifestation, the obsession with climate change the, have made people ashamed of having children. We are more co conscious about the carbon footprints than of the beauty of the tiny foot of, the, of a newborn child. I would say that the opposite view is correct. Having children is the main reason why most of us were born at all. We have life to promote life. Some of us may be extraordinarily gifted. We may be great poets or painters or investors or philanthropists or invent inventors or spiritual leaders. But most of us at the end of our lives will judge ourselves on whether if we were physically able to do it, we have created, sacrificed for and brought up a happy and virtuous family. That is the natural order of things. Abortion, family breakdown, attempts to redefine a family as something other than a married man and a woman, and that, that twisted modern dislike of large, noisy, happy families, these are, all, these are the biggest obstacles to demographic regeneration. They must be defeated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Monty.